So in the previous part, I looked at the issue of control uh, by Microsoft using Mono, uh, and I tried to look at things a bit more laterally, uh, a bit more externally. So uh, the idea that Mono is an implementation of Microsoft methods, uh, patented or not patented, uh, we'll come to this later, uh, is a troubling one because developers actually define the way that people produce software and what they produce it for. So if a developer uses a .NET implementation of something, it's probably going to work best on Windows. Uh, for natural call, you know, Microsoft actually defines what's going to be successful where. Uh, if you manage to uh, make Mono a de facto standard for, it's say, um, uh, development for phones or development of de desktop applications or even for servers, so one of the things that you try to target is the server and doing that uh, ASP.NET type thing with, uh, with Mono. Uh, what you then do is you bias the developers in a, in a way uh, whereby they become dependent on Microsoft. Uh, what it leads to is a preference for you know the real thing and not really the second, uh, second class citizen, uh, which is Mono, which is Linux, which only runs Mono, doesn't run .NET, or doesn't run the uh, Visual Studio and things like that for Microsoft. And you then drive, you actually make a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh,